up, bros? Welcome to the All Bros Podcast. I'm Caleb. And I'm Jonathan. And we are a couple of aspiring filmmakers that love to watch and critique movies, but also enjoy a lot of bit of the nerd life. Uh, this week on the podcast, we have a couple new movies coming out in 4K Spotlight. Uh, nothing in Through the Wall. It's kind of been a slow news week. <laughs> um, yeah. I feel like there's been plenty of like rumors and like, oh, check this out. Like this might happen and stuff like that. Like when it in regards to like the MCU. But yeah, I mean, the, the, the biggest thing, if you guys really wanted to know, is that Turning Red, the new Pixar film, has been officially just given a Disney Plus release. No extra cost. Um, it's not going to theaters anymore, so that will be coming out in March. I feel really bad for Pixar because that's three for three with skipping the theaters and going straight to Disney Plus. So, it must be yeah. working out for them in some way, otherwise they wouldn't do it. Yeah, I mean, people are saying that it's probably because they did it because uh, Omni was it Omicron. That, that, that's the name of the new variant, right? Omicron. Yeah. 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 So they're saying that's probably why. Oh, it makes sense, and so the animators are like, okay, we get it. It still sucks, but we get it. That's rough. Yeah. But, yeah. Anyway, um, after all of that, we will be breaking down Inheritance in Italian style, which is an indie film sent to us by the... I don't want to butcher this. <laughs> I'm, I have to look it up. I, I have a pretty uh, decent idea of what it, what their uh, production company is, but don't want to mess it up. Laughing Cow Productions. I love it. Hell yeah. So we were sent this movie. Or we, yeah, we were sent this movie to, to break down and review. So... We've, I, I, we were sent it back in, actually, let me see how far back it was. Ooh, back in November. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I had no idea it's been that long. Holy shit. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a hot minute, but we finally got it. We finally got it. This is what happens when we plan in advance. Like we have to put things off and put more things off and put more things off and yeah so we're finally getting to it dude so, i feel that's how it was with like freaking mulan didn't we just keep pushing that movie back and back dude that was no joke <laughs> like that was ridiculous how much we pushed that one back yeah that was pushed back by months it felt yeah um but anyway yeah finally getting to this one uh sent to us by laughing cow productions i'm not sure who manages this social media like i don't i is it the laughing cow cheese company i just gotta know (laughs) yeah i don't know who handles their social media accounts so it could be the director could be some like a not hr some pr person or whatever i guess we'll never know yeah, I mean, we. Can I ask. guess we could just ask, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So, anyway, you guys can look forward to that. Um, but yeah. So, without further ado, let's say we get into this. Let's do it. Need motivation? Angry Dad Podcast. Trying to jumpstart your life? Angry Dad Podcast. You want help getting off the couch? Angry Dad Podcast. You need a verbal kick in the ass? Angry Dad Podcast. You want to hear from somebody who's been through it all? Angry Dad Podcast. I am here for you. You can find me on all podcast platforms. Alrighty, first up, getting into 4K Spotlight. We have two new movies coming out. Neither of them, we've, actually, have you seen it? Seen this no. this second one? No, I I honestly was going to just because I'm like, you know what? I kind of enjoyed the first one, so I might as, might as well see the second one. But then I'm just like, do I really want to spend ten dollars on that shit? So I decided against it. Yeah. So we have two new movies. The first one is Last Night in Soho, which is kind of like a 
I don't even you know, know how like to a, describe this. Like a thriller? Like a murder mystery thriller? That's what it seems like. Yeah. It looks super interesting. And it's just it like, does. I've been dragging my feet on seeing this one. I want to see how it did in the theaters. I don't feel like it did very well. <laughs> it probably didn't. <laughs> I mean, it has a 75% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's not bad. So, I mean, it's not rotten. As oh, far yeah, as wow. we're aware, because we don't give a shit about Rotten Tomatoes scores. <laughs> yeah. Freaking giving Eternals as low as it did. Anyway. <laughs> that, was, that was absolute bullshit. Yeah, that was straight bullshit. Yeah, if you guys want to know where our uh, where how we felt really about that movie, not only check out our breakdown, but also check out mine and Caleb's top t- top ten of last year on last week's episode. Hell yeah! Um, yeah, it, this movie <laughs> did not do good. Oh my god! It literally only made back half of its budget. Oh shit! Budget was forty three million, only made twenty three point one million. That's tough. Yeah, oh, I feel bad. Yeah. We'll have to give that movie some love sometime. Yes. Just when it's at least somewhat cheaper. I'm sorry, I'm not paying full price for this movie. I hardly do that for blind buys nowadays. I've learned my lesson. What's What's the last movie you, you bought full price? Uh, Halloween or, Kills. On a blind buy. Oh, on a blind buy. I was like, Halloween Kills. That was, um... <laughs> Uh, shit, I can't remember, actually. Oh, um, old. Okay. I did pay full well, price that for that still. that was good. That was. No, no, yeah, I actually did like old. So, but, I mean, you know, 35 bucks for a, st- I only did that one just because it was a steel book, and it was, you know, um, whereas with Last Night in Soho, it's just like a bare bones 4K and Blu-ray release, so... I can literally just go on eBay and probably find it for like five or ten bucks off how much it is in stores. So that's probably the direction I'll go. Well, cool. Um, and then the other movie that we had in 4K Spotlight was The Adams Family 2. Which I heard was just as bad as the first one for a lot of people. <laughs> I mean, is that like a super low bar? Uh, what, did, I mean, what did we give the the last one? I feel like that one was forever go to. Wasn't that back in 2019? That was a while ago, yeah. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, the Adams family was back when we did Joker and Rocket Man. God damn, that's a long time ago. Yeah, and it was, I mean, it was an average grade. Like, we ended up getting a C. Yeah, okay. It deserved that. Yeah, Wait, so. what the hell? Anyway. That's really weird that it doesn't list its uh, budget on its Wikipedia. Its box office was $110 million, but it doesn't list its budget. That's really weird. That's really weird. Um, But... I uh, I'll pick this up when it's on sale because you know I I somewhat liked the first one and I own the first one on Blu-ray so I want to see the sequel, but I don't really have the high hopes. Um, like honestly, I've heard that Pugsley is more sidelined in this one than he was in the first one. I'm just like really, <laughs> and then, have it's you always heard... your favorite characters too. Yeah, dude. Seriously, <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't get it. The... <laughs> The universe hates me. That's what I've come to the conclusion of. The universe just hates me. Um, I think that could be a fair assessment. Yeah, right? Um, <laughs> but have you heard like the whole storyline uh, uh, in this movie with Wednesday? Mm-mm. So apparently, spoiler alert, guys. Do you care about spoilers? Not really. Okay. Apparently, um, Wednesday was switched at birth with... I think this is how it goes. They were she was switched at birth with another kid. She's actually not an Adams apparently, and it's like the whole the whole movie is her like truly not feeling like an Adams, but um, they try to make her know that she really is an Adams. It sounds like such a stupid plot. Dumb. (laughs) 
That is so dumb. Since when the <laughs> hell does Wednesday feel like she does? She's not an Adams. That's bullshit. even if there. Yeah, even if there was a mix-up, Wednesday is truly an Adams. That's so, so <laughs> dumb. <laughs> Uh, Be better, writers. That's so stupid. Yeah, so that's why they go on the road trip, is to like show Wednesday how great of a family they are together. Good hell. <laughs> I don't even want to watch it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, so, yeah, so that that's what's coming out this uh, to, uh, tomorrow on 4K Spotlight. So if you want to pick up either of those... Be sure to head out to your local place where you buy movies. <laughs> I don't know. So I would say, you know, go to Best Buy, Target, or Walmart. But some people buy them from their gro- grocery stores, uh, Dollar General, you know. Mm. Well, all righty. So I think that concludes 4K Spotlight and concludes our new segment this week. Yeah, that's fast. Um, so let's get right into this week's headliner, where we will be breaking down Inheritance Italian Style. Woo woo. Inheritance Italian style. Um, unfortunately, we're, we've been super shitty with posting questions of the week. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll try and get better with this, I promise. Just uh, give us some leeway to screw up, because we are definitely going to. <laughs> very, very, very much so. You think after how long we've been doing this that we would be so much better, but you'd be wrong. You'd absolutely wrong. be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, if you are new to our breakdown system, we have split movies into eight different categories that we individually score to come to a final All Bros letter grade. Uh, And the eight categories that we score are story, writing, acting, character development, effects, music, costumes, and then we give it our own personal grade at the very end. All of those numbers get magically added up, thrown into our magic algorithm, and then spits out a a letter grade for for this movie. Um... So, without further ado, I don't it's it's been it's really hard to do this with indie movies because they don't exactly have a a super descriptive uh plot. L- yeah, literally this movie only has one sentence on IMDb for it. Just one yeah. sentence of how to So, I'd say with this, we try and get Rose to uh, summarize the entire movie. Aw, you asshole. (laughs) Okay. So, it starts off with the five... So, these five sisters landing back... Or coming to Sicily um, to visit their uh, mom and their dad. um, Because their parents are... uh, thinking, hey, you know, we're not going to be around for that much longer, so it's time to divide, like, the furniture, the antiques, you know, like, the paintings and all that stuff, and see which, um, which child gets what. Um, so, you know, they, they, they all come, it, for the most part, does not go great, <laughs> um, because they just bicker with each other, and just, uh, it's just so, so great. Um, I'm going to butcher these names. So, like, how, how much in detail do you want me to go with this? I don't think you have to be, like, super descriptive. Like, I don't think you need to do, like, a full-on walkthrough, but just give the general basis. Okay. Like, as much as you can regarding, like, just the story. Okay. Um. So, after af- so yeah, so after they arrive, uh, there's just a lot of, like, family drama. Um. One of the uh, sister's husbands cheats on her, or supposedly. 
yeah, he's cheating on her. Like, right? Yeah, straight up. But, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying here. He's not even, like, upset about it. <laughs> yeah, he's not even trying to hide it. Freaking asshole. Like, he, um, dude, it's so... Okay. It's so weird when he comes in. Because, first off, he starts off with this whole, like, you didn't answer me. Or, like... Or, like, he yeah, kind of wants yeah. to, like, air out everyone, like, their dirty laundry in front of the entire family. And I'm like, what the <laughs> hell kind of person does that? <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Dude, this no is. Kidding. This is a character named Lucky and his wife, Seconda, who is one of the Parlazzi sisters. Yes. Um,. So basically, she tells him to get out, uh, and then next up for uh, messed up husbands. Although, like, I don't really know because, like, I didn't hate this guy towards the end, but then like this part, I'm just like, dude, like, why? Like, why would you have this item shipped to this address? Like, someone might have, someone else could have answered the door. I'm just saying, like. Dude, and how long were they there? That was an international purchase. Seriously. <laughs> um, so the person that we're talking about here is a guy named Ari, who is Natasha's husband, uh, another sister. Um, he uh, decides to order a, an, what's her name? Amber the Amish girl? Yep. Yep, Amber the Amish or girl. Annie. Annie. Annie the Amish girl's... Uh, box of panties uh used panties um that he decides to have delivered to the sister's parents house and the um yeah, was he the shit. uncle what you yeah. think what was plan a <laughs> seriously <laughs> so the, the the um kind of uh i don't want to say arranged uncle or what is he an uncle or is he a grandpa i don't know uh he is an uncle oh okay. Do you remember? remember his name? That I yeah. don't. <laughs> okay. Let's just call him Uncle. Um Uncle answers the door to the post office to the post office guy. I don't know why the postal worker, whatever. Um and he you know, he's like, Hey, a package from America, hands it to him and uh uh God, what's his name? Uh, Ari tries to intercept him, being like, "Hey, no, 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 let me see, let me see the box, let me see the box." But uh, the uncle gets it into the kitchen, where Ari's wife opens it and finds like four things of used panties, and she's just like, "Get the hell out of this house!" And so he goes and stays where uh, Lucky and his, uh, I, I guess, uh, I don't know, would you say, girl? I don't even know what the hell to call the other girl that Lucky is with. Uh, his mistress. Mistress. There we go. So that happens, and then um, a buoyance's uh, God, what was his wife's name? Uh, uh was that Fulvia? Yeah. Okay. So he cheats on Fulvia's sister, um, Natasha, um, and then he's kicked out. No, and he goes... cheats with. Oh Natasha. yeah, sorry. Yeah, he cheats with Natasha, and so Fulvia kicks him out. Um, and then he go. Sorry, I feel like I'm going too much into detail with this, but whatever. Um, he goes to you know crash with Lucky and Ari, but then Ari finds out that he cheated with Nat. Uh, she he cheated, or sorry, he had sex with his wife Natasha. So Lucky's just like, hey, no, 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 you can't stay here, and kicks him yeah, out. Yeah, what's with that holier than thou attitude? <laughs> yeah, right. he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa! I didn't that's sleep with her sister. Like that's just crossing the line. Like I can cheat on her all I, I want, <laughs> but there's a that line, cro- buddy. Yeah, you that get just out crosses of here. it. <laughs> Dude, there was like so many instances throughout this where I'm just like, where do you get off? <laughs> oh man. Um but um so yeah, so that happens and then it turns out the uh the mother is I, I don't th- I th- I don't think I'm like skipping too far ahead with this. Turns out the mother is in debt to the mafia. Um okay. From this is where I start to have issues with the story. Where 
hell did this come from? Yes, dude. When she was talking to <laughs> that the guy, so so uh, there this gentleman that comes to the door towards the beginning when they first get there, and she's just like, "Oh, uh, I'll talk to you later. I, I have family here with me." I thought it was like her landlord or something. That's what I thought too. I was just like, "That okay?" I'll be real. I I kind of sat there for a second. I was just like, "This dude kind of looks like he's super in the mafia," but That's, like this yeah. is kind of a weird outfit for a landlord. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then it I turns mean, out he is in the mafia. <laughs> well, wait. I actually have a kind of rebuttal with that. I don't know if I use that word right, Mister. Um, oh my god, have you seen Bob's Burgers? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, remember Bob and Linda's landlord, Mister Fishover. Uh, yeah, he wears a white suit. Okay. Okay, but I'll uh, give that... you that one. I'll give you that. But <laughs> That's it's also like the super Italian like part of it where I was just like, "Yeah, that's kind of mafia-ish." Yeah, cuz didn't he have his like hat tip too? Yeah, he yeah. went like full-blown like, "Dude, come on." <laughs> <laughs> um, can you yeah, say so it turns beating out... a dead horse? <laughs> yeah, dude, seriously though. But so it's, yeah, so it turns out she's in debt to the mafia, and in order to like get the money that she needs, uh, they decide to sell one of her uh, old paintings that's worth I forget how much, but it's like the exact amount that she would need to pay them off. But Plot then convenience, it, yeah, right. <laughs> but then it turns out it's missing. But then it turns out, um, oh, what the hell is his name? Oh, a buoyance, uh decided to borrow it because he needs to uh save uh some some one one of his like buildings in his business or some shit like that isn't that what that is God, more or less yeah. yeah um and then so once they find out that he's the one that stole it he's arrested he goes to jail um and then actually no because the the, the mom didn't press charges oh yeah that's true so he mind. just kind of disappears. Yeah, so he just disappears. <laughs> and then uh, they decide that, uh, oh, we're going to wait to divide up the uh, assets, all the furniture and, you know, all that fun stuff. And then that's – that's. Re- I feel like I skipped so much. But, like, literally the, the whole point of the movie is that they all show up in Sicily. They have, like, family arguments about who's going to get the stuff. A uh, – um, it happens that you know, like the like a bunch of people are cheated on. It's turns out. Well, actually, no. I'm sorry. I missed one plot convenience. The the um the daughter's father has a heart attack. It turns out that one of the daughters isn't even his daughter. And then it turns it, and then it goes to the mother owing the mafia. Then it goes into them wanting to sell the painting. Turns out the painting was uh, stolen by a uh, buoyance. And then he's arrested, but, you know, charges aren't pressed. And then the daughters decide, hey, we'll just wait to um, disperse all the uh, furniture and all that fun stuff. And then, that, yeah, that, that that's the end of the movie. Dude, there was so... This, so overall, like, the movie, it it's an indie film. Yes. It's an in so I'm just gonna come right out and say that firsthand because I cannot accurately explain what this is like without making it sound like it's bad because <laughs> like th- like any of the other movies that we've done, there's something to be taken away from this movie that you can like watch and study, and it does like this movie does have like a ton of entertainment value but i feel like where this the story suffered quite a bit was when it came to the busyness of the story yeah i yeah i would would definitely agree um i don't know to me i feel it was not the greatest idea to have it be five sisters i would have shrunk it down a little bit to maybe like three because like honestly when it like first started and having having them like jump between sister and sister i was getting confused yeah i mean you you kind of catch on further down the the road but there's one sister her name is tristana and she's like 
she's depressed and trying to like kill herself in different ways that are just kind of asinine. Can we but, talk about though really quickly with that? Um, I'm sorry, this mom does not know how to deal with uh, suicidal children because there is a part where she's just like, "Oh, come on, what's what's her name again?" Tristana. Uh, Tristana, don't don't be sad. Let let's just you know like forget all the sadness. Let's be happy. Let's be happy. I'm just like, lady, have you ever had depression? That's not how it works. I think that's how Italians deal with depression, though. They just don't. Oh. <laughs> I'm I'm. Okay, but I'm just saying that's not how depression works. You can't just like put on a smile and be like, "Hey, hey all my sadness is gone." Yeah, I think one of the <laughs> issues I had with that was just like, <sighs> like when she was sitting underneath the car waiting for the brakes to give out, so it, the car would like run her over and kill her. Like I, I, that's, I laugh. that's that's not a, that's not what I thought was going to happen at all. Yeah. I was just like, I, what's she do? Like, is she waiting for someone to get in their car, and not realize she's under there, and then run her over? And she's like, no, I'm waiting for sense. the brakes to fail. And I'm like, this is kind of an attention grab. Yeah. Like, this isn't like, like I. That's what I thought this whole thing was going to be. I thought her whole thing was like she just does weird shit to get attention, but it seemed like she was like actually depressed. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, hell, the, we actually got to see her attempt suicide. Well, twice, technically, but like, I feel the second one was very, very much so uh, close. Yeah, and it's just, like, there was, I feel like there were just too many, like, stories out there to f- track. Yes, like, absolutely. Like you said, agree. it probably would have eliminated a couple of the sisters. I, I would have gotten rid of Tristana and Seconda. <laughs> Yes. And, and then kind of thrown in Seconda's story into Fulvia. Yeah, because I actually would have been okay. Well, you know what? Actually, no, because uh, they, the two I'm talking about don't even end up together at the end of the movie, which... That do you know what? I'll, kudos to uh, the writers of this, because you actually surprised me. I really thought that um, Ari and uh, Seconda were going to um, kiss at the end of the movie and live happily ever after, but no, they just went their separate ways. And just like, literally, when the credits started rolling, I'm like, I hate this movie. I hate this movie just for the fact that it actually <laughs> it didn't go the way that I wanted it to. <laughs> oh, I I love when that when a movie can like disperse your expectations yeah. of it. I'm totally kidding when I say that I hated this movie. I did not hate this movie. No, like, I mean, we'll get into it. There, there are some issues with it, but overall, yeah. like the story, I feel like the story was there. Like it the, was a good, like a super solid story was there. It just had a lot of fluff to it that could have been cut out. Yeah. Um, I'll give him one this. Of the things, dude. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Like no, one good. of the things that kind of like threw me off a lot was whenever they went to go look at that painting, the one that was worth like the exact amount that she owed the mafia. Yeah. Um, what threw me off is like when, she, when, uh, what's it? a buoyance who's like an art curator person was looking at it. They're just like, what do you think it's worth? And he's like, probably nothing. And then it just kind of kept increasing in value. They're like, Oh, it's like worth, Five thousand. Oh, I bet we can get like this much for it. Oh, it's suddenly worth two million. Like it was just pick a lane. Well, I mean, he does say when he is um talking to um when oh my god, what is her name? Natasha finds him in that room. He's just like, uh, well, you know, we plan to uh tell the family that it was barely worth anything next to nothing. So that's why it kind of kept going up in value, but barely. Okay, that was kind of really hard to track then. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it was. I, I just remember him saying that. Okay. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's definitely one thing that I would have removed. Oh, no, I, I, I actually I completely agree. forgot about Duplicia. I probably would have taken her story out, too. <laughs> yeah, considering that, you know, it was just... A, 
the, her main story was her love interest with um was was his name the gardener's son uh Albon- albonzo yeah yeah um and i mean he really didn't have a lot to do anyway guy was going to freaking hang himself because he couldn't be with her i'm like damn dude he was just so willy-nilly about it too yeah like it was it was kind of hard to like figure out what direction this this movie was going to go. I'm like, okay, do we take this guy serious? Like, do we take any of this serious? Yeah, no, like seriously. <laughs> yeah, because um, I mean, I don't even know if the knot he tied would even be strong enough. To... Probably not. Huh. Like, definitely not. <laughs> I'm no knot expert, but yeah. So I th- I think I would have just completely el- eliminated Duplicia's story, taking out Tristana, put Seconda's story into Fulvia's, and then that's probably where I would have left it. <laughs> you know what's the only thing that I got uh, that I really liked about Tristana is one, I really wanted her to end up with Ari. And two, the actress was like really hot. So, you mean Seconda? Oh yeah, Seconda. Sorry, <laughs> I was like uh, Tristana was never going to end up with Ari. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, Seconda. But other than that, yeah, you could just cut her. You could cut her roll. I'll give you that. Yeah, I think the. I'm trying to think of like, what you what else you could have done because if you eliminated. Tristana completely. It doesn't really change the story. No. If you take out Seconda, Seconda was married to Lucky, and Lucky was cheating on her with, with his mistress, who who apparently can't cook eggs. Uh, Just makes no. Uh, it's like one of the first things that you learn how to cook, but you know whatever. Yeah, true. So, if you take out, like I'm trying to think, you take out Lucky. Then what happens? Ari doesn't have a place to go. Yeah, I guess. So. Yeah. So, if, like, if if we have like our the like the the plan, the only two men that would be left would be Ari and Aboyance. So and I'm not, I don't know. They really n- they literally had no communication whatsoever. Yeah, other than like a, Ari finding out that Aboyance was sleeping with Natasha. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, maybe I would have included Duplicia had her been the one that was sleeping around with Albonzo, but married to Lucky. And then Lucky's also cheating on her. There we go. So just kind of like, I don't know. I think it kind of gets convoluted after too many people, but (laughs) still. Like, I think it works. <laughs> no, I agree. I like that. <clears throat> anyway. Um, trying to think. Any other story things that, like, stood out to you? Uh, what, um, what are the kids' names? Because I just want to talk about the ending with the, those kids. Oh, okay. Uh. So there's... Do you want the, the boy and the girl? Like the yeah, ones the that talks... were talking the most? Yes. Okay, so the first one was Morris Glitzky, who was Ari's son, and okay. then Isabella, who is Aboyance's daughter. Okay, so... So Morris and Isabella. So Morris and Isabella, I don't know what it was, but the way that they like looked at each other towards the ending, I'm just like, y'all, dude, no. <laughs> your cousins, your cousins. Yep. <laughs> it's incest, it's incest. <laughs> Like, you just have that little alarm going off. <laughs> Dude, honestly, I felt, I kind of felt bad, like, when um, it cuts to, uh, this is, I think, like, when there's, like, 30 minutes left in the movie, and it cuts to them, like, playing cards on the bed. I'm just like, oh, shit, I forgot. Well, wait. No, it wasn't that. Uh, I think it happened, like, later. Or maybe it was, I don't know, it was like 30 minutes before the movie had ended, and it cuts to like the kids doing something, I'm like, oh my god, I forgot there were kids in this movie. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> I think you could have. I think you could have taken the kids out completely. You, yeah, you, you could have. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it felt unnecessary to have the children there. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> I don't quite know where to put this because I feel like it could be an acting issue, but I don't feel it was an acting issue. <laughs> It might have been, like, part of writing. Um, but when they asked Morris how old he was, and he's like, I'm 14. I'm like, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you could have said anything else other than 14, and I probably would have bought it. But 14? <laughs> yeah, no, buddy. I'm sorry. No. I'm like, come on. That is... Dude, when he said that, I got flashbacks to when um remember the strangers pray at night? Remember yeah, the guy that plays the sun and he's just like yeah, he's like a kid in high school playing uh uh baseball. I'm like bullshit, dude. The guy looks like he's in his early thirties. <laughs> Maybe late thirties actually. Oh my gosh, dude. I that got me laughing hard. I'm like, there's no way that kid is fourteen. <laughs> Like the actor himself is probably in his l- in his late teens, early twenties. I would put him at like nineteen or twenty. That's what I would put him at. Yeah. So he, you should have gone for like sixteen, seventeen, bro. Yeah. So, yeah. Wouldn't have made any difference, you know. Yeah, they're he's, cousins, st- he's still underage. It, it wouldn't have made the the dynamic any weirder. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that was like my biggest issue, and I like I said, I didn't know where to put that. <laughs> that I mean, I I definitely got something with writing for him, um, but I, I have got to plenty be of things with writing for him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but speaking of which, <laughs> I know this is probably the worst time to bring this up. Uh, this was written and directed by Doug Bremner. So, any issues that we have with anything, <laughs> we're kind of going through him. <laughs> but, um, I mean, like, you can make complaints all all day long. But if you go into this movie knowing and, f- like, just fully understanding that this is an indie movie, you can s- still have, like, a pretty good time. Like, I feel like you can get kind of caught up with the... With the story a little bit, like you like honestly... I said, when when you hear Lucky talking about like, or when he freaking ran away with his mistress and his mistress was calling him a bitch or calling his wife a bitch, I'm just like, um, excuse you. Yeah, seriously, you're the one that yeah, you're the one that went uh went ahead with him cheating. You're the one that came along. You knew it was yeah, you knew what was happening. So if anything, yeah. you're the bitch here. Yeah, she absolutely is, and it's just like, first off, where does she think that she gets a week being the mistress? Like, I thought this was our week. Like, uh, excuse you? Yeah, sir. Yeah, exactly. And I'm kind of confused. Did she fly herself to Sicily? It looked that way. (laughs) Yeah, that was confusing Uh, as hell, like. Or maybe, what? well, or no, maybe he flew, uh, they flew together. He left her at that house that he rented in Sicily. And so then he came to the house and then she's just like, but wait, we were supposed to have the whole week together. And so that's why she went to the house. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Me neither, but that's, that's all I got. That's <laughs> kind that's of the a best lot of hoops to jump through for a, for a side <laughs> for That's <a> true. Bitch. <laughs> yeah. Um. I love how his big romantic gesture was putting a paper sign that says "I love you" in the yard. Yeah, dude. Like, like when he was on. talking about like, oh, I'm gonna spell "I love you" in the in the hills on the side of the house. I'm just like, okay, like. I could see how that could work. And then when he pulls out this stupid paper sign, I'm just like, what? 
Like, it's a paper sign with three candles, and somehow you guys caught it on fire. Yeah. Uh... Like, it, it was so weird because he's just like, whoa, it's on fire. And then it, I'm like, wait, what? And, like, when they pan out and, like, show the, the sign on fire, it's, like, barely on fire. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and the sign was so far away from the candles. Like, how did you guys screw that up? Yeah, it's tough. But it was, like, his attitude towards Sekonda was so weird. He's just like, I can't lose her, I can't lose her, but he's still like, but, I mean, this chick's a good lay. <laughs> well, because he's just like, I can't lose the house, I can't lose the house, you know, like, I still want that house, but yeah, I can't lose my side, bitch. Yeah, like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, how the hell does that make... Like, he had... Like, well... He had, like, completely zero character development. Yeah. He didn't, like, see the error of his ways. He didn't start feeling different about Seconda or anything. He just kind of, like... Yeah, I'm a cheater, but I don't want to lose the house. Are you crazy? <laughs> Yeah, he's um he's the definition of a piece of shit. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh So where are you sitting at with the with the story? Uh Honestly, I'd say in like the seventies. What do you I how, can give you that. I'm in, I'm in the low seventies though. As am I. I'm I'll go seventy one. I'll go a little bit lower. I'm I'm gonna go to it like it's just a solid seventy. All right. Uh, which that averages us out to a seventy point five. Woo. All right, moving on over to writing. Okay, I got I gotta reenact uh, the one kid's uh, way he says one word. Uh, Morris. Um, his mom, while they're at the dinner table when they first get to Sicily at her parents' house, is just like, "Hey, uh, can you can you please put that way?" And the way he the way he says this line, he goes like, "Fuck you!" It's so <laughs> <laughs> it's the way he's, like that was the, perfection. The, <laughs> yes, that's what I was hoping for. Um, I I feel it was very unwarranted. I get it because you know, like he's a you know a teen. But I don't know why, just, I, I I don't know, I'm not trying to beat up on the actor, but just the way that he delivered it, couldn't he have just said, F you? I try to say only one F word per episode. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, you know what, like, what vibe I got after seeing that, that Hmm. scene? Or, like, the, the, the mental image I got, I'm like, I kind of got a picture of like Jonah Hill being like, I hate it here and running away. (laughs) (laughs) Like not comparing the, the, the actor, what was his name? Dylan Bremner. Yeah. Yeah. Not comparing Dylan Bremner to Jonah Hill. It was just kind of like that vibe. Where like honestly, like, I don't F even think that you. I hate it here, and then yeah. he, like runs away. And like honestly, it's not like I don't think it's the actor's fault at all. It's just the way that they told him to deliver the way you say "f you." And I, I feel that it should have just been a normal, like, not a normal "f you," but like more of a like, like maybe like a yelling "f you." Because honestly, I don't feel like it was more. It was really a yelling "f you." It was kind of like a sarcastic "f you." A little bit. Personally, I would have, I would have had it like whisper it, and then when she's like, "What?" and then have him say it like exactly like that. Yes, that would have been like, a lot I think better. that would have just helped it a little bit. <laughs> Count, like literally, um, good way, good um, example I can think of is: Have you ever seen Rob Zombie's Halloween? Uh, no. Okay, so there's a part in it where young Michael. Uh, the principal breaks up him and this other kid fighting and he tells the principal F you, but kind of like quieter. And the principal is just like, what did you just say, son? And he shouts out, I said, F you. It should have been something like that. 
Yeah, I mean, after I think after you get like the permission to say it again, then you can say it however the hell you want, and it will work. <laughs> yeah. Um. Some I'm trying to think of like other dialogue issues. Anything between Morris and Isabella was just kind of really cringe inducing. I'm trying to remember who got uh, more for any characters. Th- that was the kids. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, that definitely needed some work. Like the way that they were talking about their parents and and all that fun stuff it was just it was very cringe inducing like it's just like okay once again you could have made these kids a little bit older but it's like an a what a nine-year-old and a 14 year old having these deep conversations about their parents and like they should just separated by now at least they wouldn't fight I'm yeah like, no that's like a conversation like 16 17 sometimes 18 year olds have yeah especially considering that towards the ending um they they bring up uh, with like the um furniture and stuff and them you know like wanting to like take it and like uh bring it into their homes or sell it off and they're just like yeah but you're uh um you know what about when we grow up and we don't get to uh keep this like uh family um heirloom alive uh sicily uh everything that we have in sicily is just gonna you know be gone we're not gonna be able to keep the family name alive and i'm just like what nine-year-old is thinking of this shit none of them you're nine years (laughs) old you should be thinking about what freaking um what do you want to do with barbie's dream doll house next yeah no shit (laughs) It was just like most of their dialogue was just very oddly written. Very. Like I think I would have done something just a little bit more age appropriate for them. Like I like if you want to like have them sit there and bitch and complain about their parents like the entire movie, like I w- I probably would have been less upset by what we yeah, got. That, yeah, that 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 makes sense. You know, honestly for. I feel when you hit like eight or like what, like seven and above, maybe that's like when you really start to either like or dislike your parents. I wouldn't say that young. Yeah. I'd say maybe like 11 and up. Okay. Yeah. yeah when you hit like Because then they start getting phase. like a little bit more like restricting on like who you're hanging out with, your friends and whatnot. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So preteen phase. That that that's when you really decide if you love or hate your parents. Yeah, well, I mean, I but then you always eventually come back to loving your parents. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> but you, everyone goes through that phase. Like, oh my god, I hate you guys. You guys won't let me do anything. I can't wait to move out on my own. Like you're so suffocating. <laughs> yeah. And then we, yeah, like Caleb said, we all know we all come back around. Most of us do. Um, and just like, yeah, you guys were right. I know I was wrong. Thanks for always being here. Yeah, but like we said in the story category, I th- I feel like you could have re we reworked some of the characters to kind of disappear and go away. Yeah, like one of them, I feel like you could have completely just gotten rid of the uncle. Yeah, he felt so. Can we just talk about how the freaking uh, whoever he was looking for? throughout the whole movie was a freaking cat the cat was cute but i had no idea it was gonna be a freaking cat that he was looking for i knew damn well it was gonna be a cat really oh i thought yeah, it was actually a person like, mm, i like, nah, that it just seems too weird for like i i thought it was either, i thought it was going to be a small animal if i'm getting no. like super specific on what i thought Okay, you're way better at this than I am because yeah, I still thought it was a human being. I yeah, thought but maybe it's just like, like what per he didn't serve any purpose to the story. He like didn't. usually characters like that kind of give them some clue or some instance of like just something that helps progress the story. He gave them nothing. <laughs> Honestly, think okay. I think I know why I thought it was a human is because I thought it was maybe his like wife that had died years ago. But maybe like the dementia had set in, so he still thinks that she's alive. Uh, okay. Uh. My only issue with that is that none of the other 
none of the family members would like acknowledge that. That's true. Like it kind of like seemed like they were just as confused about who Chi Chi was as he was. Yeah, I mean, I would say that uh, Tris, um, not her, uh, my Fulvia was kind of the only one that was just like, oh, you know, no, I don't know, I'm sorry. She's yeah. just like, she's just like, oh, have you checked upstairs? <laughs> no, I think it was. She said upstairs or downstairs. I can't remember. It was one of those. Yeah, like I, I think one like the issues with the writing was in most movies you have the A story and the B story. Every once in a while, you can throw in a C story, just depending on how how well you can work it in and make it feel <laughs> like a natural thing. Yeah, this felt like it had like four or five different stories going on at once. Yeah. And it just was like, it just hit you with a lot. Like, for one, it didn't seem like anyone really wanted to do the whole, like, distributing the, the, the furniture. No. Like, what was, like, one of the, I forget which sister it was. I think it might have been Duplicia talking about how her therapist said that she should collect her inheritance. I'm just like, cool, you collect your inheritance once someone dies. <laughs> That's how this works. Can we talk about, and this isn't the actress. This is how she was written, I feel. No, uh, up until the ending of her deciding, uh, oh, you know what, um, I'm not going to choose you over, you know, like my family's heritage. You know, like you're not getting this painting. I hated Natasha's character. Her writing was so bad. She just came across as such a bitch. Dude, like all the time. Yeah, she like it seemed like she didn't yeah, she didn't want to be there. Um she was such a bitch to all of her sisters. Like anything like happy they said, she had to come back with a sarcastic remark or a snarky remark. I'm just like, "Bitch, if you don't want to be here, just get the hell out." Yeah. Dude, and like what I think what really freaking sucked was when uh when Lucky came in and she fa- or when Lucky's mistress came in and start like kind of blew up dinner with Seconda. Like and then Seconda's like get out, get out and then he like leaves. Like it it pans over to Natasha and Natasha's freaking laughing. Yeah. It's just like, like you, you, you know freaking what? wicked witch of the west. <laughs> if if they wanted us to hate her, and I'm assuming they probably did, kudos to them because mission accomplished. Yeah, and it, I think it was just so weird that she just randomly disappeared at the end. Yeah, like she, yeah, didn't they say, oh, she decided to take a uh, early flight because that's what her therapist said or something like that? Yeah. Like, like it, doesn't say goodbye, nothing. I'm like, okay. Dude, it was so funky. Like, she was just, like... And they set it up early, I guess. So, like, that she's going to be, like, a huge pain in the ass. Because, like, you remember at the airport when she's going to that lady about lost luggage. And they're like, oh, well, unfortunately, this is a pretty common occurrence on international flights. And then she's just like, oh, well, I guess (laughs) that's that. And then leaves. And they're like, wait, we can mail it to you. (laughs) Wait, I thought she said uncommon. Did they say uncommon? I thought they said. I common. thought I heard uncommon. Oh. Well, oh. That kind of either... seems like a weird thing. Like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you you're probably right, but yeah, either or, she's just like, oh, no, that's just perfect. I'm like, lady, take a deep breath, and like she said, she'll get your address and they'll mail it to you. Do you want to just go without your bag? Like it's it's just lost forever. Okay. Yeah, like that. When she's just, like, throwing a fit at leaves, I'm just like, okay, first off, you don't have any clothes now. Or I feel bad for the, the husband. You pack. You, dude, freaking, like, Ari never got a straight answer on why Natasha married him. He, yeah. Like, that was one of the things that they said that they were supposed to be working on in, like, couples therapy, which was super weird for him to bring up at the dinner table. 
Like, yeah. I feel like, I feel like a lot of the conversations that they had out in public, they could have had behind cl- closed doors. Very, or very much not so. could have. They should have had yeah. behind closed doors. Very much so. Like, Ari was, like, throwing a big old fit. He's like, have you even done the homework that the therapist suggested that you do? Like, writing why you even bothered marrying me? And I'm like, that seems like a private topic. Yeah. Yeah, it it, it really does. I think you could have gotten, like, a similar effect to what happened. Because, first off, all the private, in major quotes conversations were had in front of everyone you could have easily just had people listening in or just overhearing conversations like go up into the bedrooms have Ari and Natasha fight and have whoever's in the room next to her overhear or have someone outside the door hearing or having yeah. like everyone sitting quietly in the family room, like listening to them fight, just just something where it doesn't seem so blatantly obvious that you're trying to give a, put a plot point in our face. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it's just like okay, there's just a there's a certain level of realism that you need to follow when it comes to stuff like this, and it's just rework it rewrite it like the content itself was fine yeah it's just location yeah like i think that would have been like i feel like that would have been way funny had they like made that a running gag of the the movie where it's like oh they're having this private conversation very loudly everyone's hearing and so when they come out of the room you just see like one or two people at the beginning and then like everyone at the very end (laughs) like just make it so it's just like okay now it's just more and more obvious that everyone's just gonna listen in on you yeah that's what 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 forces natasha out yeah that would have been really good yeah just something along those lines but other than that like we said, the story it's itself is is pretty well done. Like it it it's just very busy is the yes. main main critique here. Yeah. Just take out a couple plot points or not plot points. Remove a couple characters, merge some of their stories together. Honestly, take Tristana out completely <laughs> and you you have a pretty kick-ass story. Yeah. So it, it's it's tough because it's just it's a it's a kick-ass story hidden in some weeds. Yes. So where are you sitting at with with writing? Um, I'd probably go a touch below. Um, my uh, act my, not my acting. Wow, my uh, story score. So I'd probably go a seventy. I actually agree with you on that. I'm I'm going to go a little bit lower. I think I'm going to go to 68. Because okay. I think there were quite a, a bit of issues for me. No, that's fair. All right, so that averages us out to a 69 for writing. Nice. <laughs> Did you do that on purpose? No, I didn't. <laughs> hey, I'm supposed to be the dirty one here, man. Don't steal my thunder. <laughs> Dude, just I'm ki- pretty sure I'm no kidding, one thinks that you're the dirty one of the I know, of I'm the two kidding. of us. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right, moving on over to acting. Um, we got a pretty decent list, so we're we're gonna f- focus on the family and their husbands. And then the two kids that we thought were a significant enough role. Yeah. Um, so first we got Don Campion. And I'm so sorry if I butcher your guys' names. If you guys are even going to listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we, got, we have Don Campion who played Malata Parlazzi. We have Caroline Avery Granger. 
who played Natasha Parlazzi, TJ Sanson, who played Tristana, uh, Zoe Myers, who played Seconda, Maggie Quinn, who played Fulvia, then Concetta De Luco, who played Duplicia. So that is all the, the sisters and the, the mom. Getting into the husbands, we have Ismail Ib, Ibn Connor, who played Lucky, who was Seconda's husband. Uh, Rob Maniscalco, Maniscalco. Yeah, Maniscalco, who played Ari, who was Natasha's husband. Uh, we have Bill Neenan, who played Aboyance, who is Fulvia's husband. Uh, we have Timothy Perez Ross, who played Albonzo, who was Duplicia's lover. Slash stalker. Yes, yeah, seriously, though. I had mixed feelings about him. <laughs> Same. Uh, let's see. We had Michael Skimeka. Simeka, who played Professor Rigor, Rigor Tortoise Parlazzi, who was the daughter's father. Then we have Dylan Bremner, who played Morris Glitzky, who is Ari's son. And then we have Diane Shepard, who played Isabella Ratar, who was Aboyance's daughter. All right, thoughts? Um... Overall, I feel it had more so stronger people than it had weak ones. I'll give you that. Yeah. Uh, um, definitely, I feel two that really stuck out to me that I feel were really good um, were Maggie Quinn, who played Fulvia, and um, Rob Maniscalco, who played Ari. Um, you know, they weren't married or anything, but I feel the performances from these two actors were really really good actually um especially um how um how Maggie Quinn um of how um she portrayed her character being affected by her husband being cheated or her husband cheating on her with her sister thought she did a great job in that th- that regard um and then with uh Ari's actor I'm still bitter that him and uh Seconda didn't end up together at the end because that's just that's just some bullshit like come on <laughs> it was right there I'm just like freaking kiss her just freaking kiss her already and it never happened um but but I digress um, yeah um if I have to go with like a top 3 I think my my number 1 would definitely go to Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it's a little bit harder that to, to do. <laughs> <laughs> I think just because she was supposed to play such an unlikable character, I'd have to go with Caroline Granger, who is Na- who, Natasha, as my number one. Because oh, yeah. if if the goal was to make un- her unlikable, you freaking killed it. Yeah, you did a tremendous job. Like, I hated Natasha. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Like, I was, I'm was, i like, gosh, why are you such a bitch all the time to everyone? Uh, like, even yeah. the dude you're, che- you're cheating on, like, it's your husband's, or it's your sister's husband, and while he's, like, scurrying out in the nude, he, you freaking call him an idiot. <laughs> yeah, see, uh. I'm like you, you, you wicked witch! <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh good hell! Uh, my number two, I would, I would give to Seconda, who was played by Zoe Myers. Um, I feel like she, she really killed it with the uh, the emotional scenes, like the conversation that she had with with Lucky, which. I do have my issues with with Lucky. Um, I do think he was portrayed a little bit too open and loud. For, yeah. Like, just for just for the the d- type of discussions that they were having, like I feel like Seconda's reactions and everything were very grounded, 
and realistic where Lucky's were just a little bit too just um, enthusiastic. I would, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Um, then my number three, I would probably give to Maggie Quinn, who played Fulvia. Um, she was all like, with this one, I the, I did have very few issues with her performance. Everyone else, like I kind of had problems with, unfortunately. Yeah. No. Yeah. Same. Here. Um. um. I, I have to knock it out of the way, and I am so sorry if, depending on how hard you worked on this, <laughs> but the mom, Malata, her accent was so bad. <laughs> yeah. Like, you could tell. You could tell that she was working really, really hard on it. But there were times where she went just a little bit too stereotypically Italian. And then there were times where she I felt like she was she was going a little like Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just a, an Italian accent's like really hard to do correctly. Yes, that yeah, that's, that's what I've heard. And there were a lot of times where, like, I didn't have any issues with it, but then there was just those, those hints here and there, and I'm like, "That's, that's not great." Yeah. Um. It's like I get it. You're trying here, but it's not coming off as that good. Yeah. One of the things that I I forgot to mention in writing, they used their names a lot. Yes, they did. Like almost excessively so. Like it was it was nice because I was able to like kind of figure out who was who. Yeah, that 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 was the biggest positive. Um, but when it comes to like the performances, like I feel like it was just enough to affect the performances because Malata, she was like the way that she would just put the the emphasis like, if I were to, like, go to anyone and say, um, say, Tris- say Tristana in the most stereotypical Italian accent that you can. Like, that's exactly how she said it every single time. Mm-hmm. Like, it was always just, like, Tristana! <laughs> that was incredible, Caleb. Like, it was just, like, so much emphasis on the end. Like, nah, nah. Like, like it's just drawing it out. Yeah. And, the, like, she like she did it with everyone. She's like, Natasha. I'm like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> like, you do not have to use the name every other sentence. Which, again, I know that it could be a writing issue, but it's just... Uh, you could have said it a little bit with without so much eff- eff- emphasis. Gosh, I can't talk today. <laughs> I think that's where my 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 problems lied with 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 her performance in particular. No, and on, honestly, I can absolutely agree with that. Um, Tristana also was just a little too too much enthusiasm behind like everything that she was doing like it it she, she was supposed to be playing someone who was suicidal it came off as someone who was very attention seeking yeah and uh, and you know someone that is suicidal can can be very attention seeking but i feel she came off a little too much it, there usually is supposed to be like a balance between it Whereas, um, I can sometimes it felt like you kind of forgot that she was suicidal and that she was just, um, attention seeking. That's mostly what you got from it. It was like, it was just too performance based. Yeah. Like laying underneath the car, like very, just very dramatic. And then the way that she took, was trying to like make herself overdose on those pills in front of everyone. 
Yeah, most people, they yeah, they do that in secret. They do that behind closed doors. Yeah, so it's just, like, everything that she did was just very performance-based and just didn't, for someone that you wanted to be suicidal, and I'm not sure if we were supposed to take her seriously or not, but I think I think there were ways that you could... I don't want to say make a joke of suicide, but if you wanted to make that funny, there were ways to go about it that weren't that. Yeah, no, no, I absolutely agree. Um, yeah, my I think the one that, the one character I had the biggest problems with were was Lucky. I yeah, I, I don't know. I I feel they should have chosen a different actor for the role I'll give you that like I he just needed to I think his problem was he just needed to downplay it a little bit he was just his energy was just so high yeah the entire time and like he was just excessive very like if there was a, a stereotypical side character that's who lucky was yes very much like so. the, the way that he was able, like, he asked Ari, he's just, like, he didn't take anything seriously. It, it felt like, like, any yeah. t- anytime he was talking to, um, to Ari, he's just, like, being really gross and just, like, like, I, I, like, I need both of them. Like, talking about his, his mistress and his wife, he's like, I need both of them. Like, one has a really nice house. One's a really good lay. And then when he, when Ari's talking about like not having sex with Natasha for like years, and he's just like, "Yeah, but is she good in bed?" It's been a couple years. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ex- exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I think that was just one of the big problems with that character. I I think they just he he just needed to reduce his energy just just a hair. And the, also the same could be said with the kids, uh, Morris and, and Isabella. Their energy was way too high. <laughs> yeah. Like when they were talking about putting on like an award show for their parents. Like that was just the most cringe-inducing thing ever. I'm like, seriously, it feels like I'm watching something that should be on stage. <laughs> like the super, just like loud talking, the loud body movements, like everything was just so loud. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, uh, I just, it didn't work for me. No, yeah, dude, it didn't work for me either. I would have honestly found a way to just eliminate the kids altogether. Yeah, nothing against those actors. Just it, it just feel, felt very unnecessary to bring the children. Felt very unnecessary. I'm sure there's someone you could have gotten to watch them for a couple of days. Yeah, like send them out. Like if you. If you wanted to use like the young kid, what was his name, Justin or whatever his name? Yeah, was. I forget his name. I think uh, he actually was Justin. His son, that one that kind of like ends up ratting him out. Uh, uh, uh Jason. Jason. Name. Yeah. Yeah. So if you wanted to, like, just eliminate, or if you just wanted to get rid of the kids and solely use Jason. Just for the the reveal that a buoyance is the one stealing the painting, I would have been fine with that. Had, had you just like hidden him away for a while, like remind yeah. us of him every once in a while, but just like just get rid of him. <laughs> yeah, I yeah I agree. Uh, any other thoughts on uh? On acting, while I think of what grade I'm going to give this. No, no, honestly, um, like I said, there were definitely a lot more like big hitters than big losses. I guess with acting, um, 
but the big losses definitely did bring it down. Yeah. For me, they brought it down pretty hard. Yeah. Where are you at? Uh, I would definitely say I'm in the 60s. Um, honestly, I'd probably go 68. I'm actually a little bit lower than you. Actually, I'm actually pretty low. I How think I, I'm, I'm going down to a 63. No, that's understandable. It's completely understandable. It was just, like I said, the good people. If I were to like average out all of the, like the best people, I'd probably be up in like the mid seventies, but they're not going to be able to pull. Like they're just not able to pull up all of the the poor performances for me. Yeah. Which which sucks because like I mean. This is just critically speaking here. I did really enjoy everyone's performances, but there were just issues here and there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to a 63, which averages us out to a 65.5. Fair enough. All right. Next up, we got character development. Yeah. Who? 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 The? Okay, I can't talk today. Wow. Who had who had who, the, 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 who had character development in this film? Uh that's an excellent question, Rose. <laughs> I I I could not tell you, honestly. <laughs> Everyone stayed so stationary. Yeah. Like <laughs> Natasha didn't really have any. Like she was just like the entire time just very resentful of Ari and then she found something in uh, a buoyance and then she just kind of disappeared from there kind of stayed a bitch the whole time <sighs> Tristana didn't really have any Ari didn't really have any even though I think I feel like there was some sort of focus around him yeah there was like, he just kind of... Ari and Seconda were the ones that I feel you could make the argument that had any. Yeah, But even considering... then, it's just not really. No, yeah, because, you know, Seconda realizes that she's tired of always feeling like she's second best, so she decides that it doesn't matter uh, what a guy looks like. It just matters how he makes a girl feel, you know. Uh, makes her smile, makes her laugh, and then Ari finally realizes, you know, hey, um, I can't actually be loved by someone who actually does love me because, you know, um, as Seconda told me, I'm a nice guy, I have a, a good heart, um, and I am very kind to uh, women. So. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a... I feel like it, the, it was a very rushed arc if there if it was it, one cuz yeah cuz literally that end. arc is like the last 30 minutes of this movie. Yeah, and it's just so small too. Yeah, so yeah, it's really not an arc if at all. Yeah, so unfortunately I think I'm also in the low 60s with this y one. Yeah, as am I. Um I'm going to go with 64. give you 64 okay all right so that averages out to 64 uh moving on over to effects which because this is an indie movie we're going to talk about the cinematography um i d um i don't know well, god what am i saying here <laughs> i'm assuming they shot on location with the house, definitely. I, yeah. I don't know if they actually went to... Well, they, it said that it was all filmed in Georgia. Really? What? In Atlanta. Did, have you heard that like everyone's saying like Georgia, especially Savannah, is becoming like Hollywood's new destination for filming movies? Uh, yes, I have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude, you're... So, 
you might be I able know, to sneak onto on some Marvel movie sets. News. I'm yeah. just waiting on Marvel news, and I will okay. be, like, right there. Well, apparently that's actually where they filmed a lot of uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. Was it in Savannah? I thought they shot in Atlanta. Oh, yeah, it was Atlanta. I'm sorry. Yeah, Atlanta's, like, the the big movie place now. Hmm. How far of a drive is Atlanta from you? Three, four hours. Damn it. I mean, it's not too bad. I mean, if you it, okay, if you were able to be an extra on Spider-Man: No Way Home, and be I'd be in, there in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> oh. Doc Ock can kill me. He can throw me from the bridge. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man doesn't even have to catch me, man. <laughs> yeah, it'd be an honor dying by Alfred Molina's tentacles. <laughs> oh. Anyway getting into the effects of this the cinematography was was pretty well done um the issues that i had with it were sometimes they i feel like they should have put focus on the characters talking a bit more because there was a lot of times where someone was saying something that wasn't on screen yeah i agree there was actually one part that I noticed with sound. Um, uh, what was it? I think it was when they were appraising the uh, um, painting that they were going to sell. And I think um, it was a line that, what was her name? Seconda says, um, she like says like, well, that's that or something. And it was like, um, it wasn't as like audible as all the other lines. Said I'm just like okay. There, either she wasn't wearing her mic, or there wasn't like one above her. That was like that there was like was the a biggest... few instances. Okay, where that was that the happened. only one that I really noticed. Did you listen to this in, with speakers or headphones? Headphones. Okay, I listened to it with headphones too, and I noticed like a lot of problems like that. Hmm. Which yeah, I don't we'll know get how that's the only... music. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, but c- c- cinematography wise, I feel where this movie could have could have been helped a lot is, and I hate to say it, I feel like you guys could have maybe used a little bit more stock footage just to enhance the scale of the movie because it did it felt like you were trying to pull off like Sicily and. I feel like it, you guys could have like. I feel I I don't mean to be like feel like I'm talking directly to them. I feel like s- some stock footage of like Sicily or Italy really could have enhanced how the big this movie felt. Yeah, like on, no, I absolutely agree with you because like honestly, and this is nothing against the movie. Um, I don't know how much you've seen of the Golden Girls, but. Uh, I feel when Sophia, um, Dorothy's mom, talks about Sicily, um, I feel she gives even more detail that I can like get into my head about it, and she's just talking about it. They actually don't show it than what they portray in this film. Like I picture Sicily when she talks about Sicily and the Golden Girls. Here, not so much. Yeah, like it's just like I said, stock footage would have could have helped a lot here absolutely show some f- show it like an airplane fly like the, it, it looked like they were at like a pretty small airport even possibly like a private airport i'm yeah. sure that you could have gotten stock footage of an airplane flying through like italy oh yeah i feel i feel that would have been pretty easy to do yeah then just a, a couple stock footage drone shots of of like the the mountainous hills and um, grape fields and and all that like that would have helped so much because it like overall it just felt so tight like yeah. even when oh. it like especially when they went out to like look at the land and like uh what's her face when uh Malata was just like okay let's go take a drive so you guys can see the land and. 
it was kind of weird that she was showing them land that she used to own. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, she's like, let's go for a drive. Let's see let's see the land and like show you guys what you'll be inheriting one day. And that just felt so small scaled. Yeah. It, like, yeah, it did. It just it, those little like little tricks here and there just to make it the scale seem larger. Just just something. Yeah. Like it's it's just very very tight like it, it the main focus was in the house which in the house no problem you guys freaking killed it like showing us what the house was like i actually felt like i could like map out the house oh yeah which was yeah, super agree. impressive yeah i agree um but yeah for me it like my issue was scale and not putting the right focus on who was talking and i know it probably would have added a lot of different like cuts and whatnot but i think it, i think it would have helped a little it, bit it, yeah it would definitely paid off uh any other shots that you not can think of not really honestly Overall, I feel like this is definitely one of like a high point for the movie. Yes, I definitely agree. Um, so personally, I think we're gonna be at like a seventy four. Okay. Hey, you know, you know what? I'll I'll I'll, I'll match you. I'll I'll go seventy four as well. All right, that averages us out to a seventy four. <laughs> Sweet. All right, next up we got music, which in this we're going to throw in like the actual music and we're going to throw in some of the audio. Um so kind of like what we talked with sorry, I kind of brought up brought up a little too soon in effects with the audio, like me and Caleb pointed out that there were some moments where when a actor is talking, you can tell that either they didn't have a mic attached to them at that point or um there wasn't a mic above their head because they were definitely less audible compared to the other actors that were speaking before them. Yeah, very much so. That that definitely happened a lot. Um, I will say, though, I was very impressed with the score that they had. Yeah, it was actually very good. It was super catchy. Yeah. Um... Yeah, love the score. The one of my my issues was that sometimes the music didn't quite fit the scene. That's like fair. Kinda, like there were some times where I feel like they were trying to go a little bit on the dramatic side, but the music was very upbeat. Yeah, and so it kind of just pulled away from the drama of the scene. And I, I can't think of, like, a specific instance. But I, I do re- recall it happening a couple times. And so, like, it it, al- it almost made me, like, pause to think, like, okay, was this meant to be a joke? Or is the music just not working for it? Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a tough tough one for me. Yeah. But yeah, I think what another like the, what you were saying when it didn't sound like some of the characters were mic'd up. Yeah, so personally, that definitely brings it down for me. So I'd probably be at a seven. That's actually exactly where I was too. <laughs> oh, sweet! <laughs> there we go. Yeah, like it. It was good. It was really good. The, I I feel like had you fixed the problems with the mic and like. I don't even think it was necessarily the mic. I think it might have been like the sound mixing. That's true. That's like I think point. that like the mixing was just off. And so it just kind of made all the the other scenes stick out. Yeah. Like it, because there were times where it was like, oh, someone's talking and it's super clear, super crisp. And then you hear someone in the background talking and it sounds like they're on on a bad mic. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think a seven is definitely fair. What brings it up, uh, like, had the score not been as kick ass as it was, I probably would have been down at a six. But the the score was was pretty bitching. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I can definitely agree with that. All right, next up we got costumes. Which I mean, the costumes weren't bad overall. The, I I do have one <laughs> major complaint, mm. and I think you know exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> um, the professor. Yeah. Who greenlit the goatee? Because <laughs> that could have not looked any more fake i mean come on you guys had some kick-ass costumes the entire time but then like, you know I'm, okay like not like top level like Hollywood but like this like, levels, yeah but like, but like the sisters dresses were like on point they looked great yeah but they then looked amazing yeah but then they decided you know what maybe let's make the dad look like colonel sanders and yeah, just... Colonel Sanders' goatee was on steroids. <laughs> um, just yeah, that, yeah straight but... up a billy goat. <laughs> <laughs> so true, so true. Oh my god, I love it. It was like it was borderline distracting. Dude, seriously though, thank God he doesn't have a lot of moments in this movie. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, but everything else seemed to fit pretty well. Just, and it, it's super hard to dock for, for that goatee because it was he was, he had such a a, a small role. Yeah. I might be up at an eight because I, I was like I yeah was thoroughly impressed with the the costumes overall. Yeah, the, yeah, I I would agree with an eight. All right, last up, we got our own personal grade. You want to take this one? Yeah, I would love to. Um, so overall, um, I actually think this is a pretty good indie film. Um, it's definitely better than um, some of the others that we've reviewed on this podcast, not looking at any others. Uh, Legacy of Whining. We really shouldn't say that. <laughs> no, yeah, we shouldn't. But no, this one is actually good. Um, that Yeah. Uh, some of the act such a dick when we're just like when we always bring that one up. I know, <laughs> but considering that, what what was it? The wife that like kind of like threw a fit about our grade was that who it was? She was trying to defend it a little bit. Uh, okay, I wouldn't say she was like full blown throwing a fit. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully she doesn't listen to this. Yeah, dude. <laughs> How embarrassing would that it, be? It would, but like honestly, at this point, I really don't care. Yeah, I mean, you you got your D minus, like chill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, story's pretty good. Um, like Caleb uh pointed out, there are some characters that can be taken out, and then their characteristics just m pushed into other characters to make it not as so um jam packed. Um, with having to tell um, all these uh, character stories. Um, but uh, just have some acting problems. Um, but yeah, overall, a uh, very, very good indie film. I, I enjoyed it, had some problems with it, but overall, um, I honestly never got bored. Um, I, I had, uh, it kept my interest from start to finish. Um, so I am going to go a 72 nice yeah br um just kind of touching on what you said it w there's a lot that can be learned from this movie the honestly the the lowest thing for me was was the acting um i think there was just maybe some coaching that needed to be done here and there just to like, just to improve some people's performances. Yeah. But overall it wasn't distracting enough from the story. And the story is honestly what shined about this. 
Absolutely. Like it's such an interesting one. Like I said, it's it's a it's a solid story tra- trapped in some weeds. Like clean those weeds out. Like you have a a kick ass story. So I'm I'm probably I'm gonna sit. At, I'm sitting at a solid seventy with this one. Like I, I think I had a, I a like good it. enough time for for a seventy. Yeah. Hey, you know, C's all around. I think that's actually really good. You can never beat a C grade. That's always good. Yeah. You need to did your job. All right, so that brings us to a seventy-one for our personal grade. All right, that's not yeah, that's not bad. I like it. Yeah, and so that concludes this week's breakdown and the final All Bros letter grade for Inheritance Italian Style has come to a C minus. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Yeah. It's a it's a pretty solid C. It's actually closer to to a solid C than than it is a D plus. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so it is sitting at a 72.37%. Okay. So let me do my magic here. All right, comparing this to some other C minus movies that we have break broken down. This should I go up first or down? Now I'll go up first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. All right, so Inheritance Italian Style is sitting at a 72.37%. That puts it below X-Men Dark Phoenix, which is at a 72.62. Okay. And puts it below Tom and Jerry, which is at a 72.93. Um, but it puts it above Countdown, which is at a 71.56. Yeah, I definitely agree with that, actually. <laughs> uh, puts it above Cats, which is at a 70.48. Why does that sting a little bit? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> just like just a, a little bit. But remember the effects. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. All right, it puts it above Zack Snyder's Justice League, which is it, at a 70.15. We ranked to that that low? Dude, like, it was barely higher than, than Joss Whedon's. Oh, that makes me sad. It doesn't make me that sad. Really? That's a oh. long-ass movie, dude. And it it is, is, but it's such a better film. It It's a... It's better... <sighs> Yes, it's better with a rock bottom movie. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Not quite rock bottom, like yeah. But yeah, puts it above uh Zack Snyder's Justice League, which what I said, seventy point one five. And then finally it puts it above The Last Jedi, which is at a Damn seventy right. point one two. Rightfully so. Yeah, so out of seven C minus movies, this is ranked number three. That's pretty good. That's damn good. I am interested to see what else it is above. Like just kind of going down the the list. Yeah, okay, so there was a two percent difference between the Joss Whedon Justice League and Zack Snyder. Sorry, I disagree with that, but that's just me. I feel like that's the one that you you did. I think you fought pretty hard for that to be higher. I did. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, because we did that with um, I forget their names. That they had us break down their short film, right? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, the, yeah we were. Okay, we were both going to go a little bit higher on it, but they they were the ones that brought it down. Yeah. Oh, which one was that? Was it Rocky Road to Freedom? Oh no, it was the short film. Oh, uh, Super Astra. The yeah, that yeah, that's what it was. Jeez, I don't know why it took me so long to remember that. 
Dude, I didn't even remember it, so you got that over me. <laughs> oh. But uh, anyway, so yeah, that's where it's uh where it's sitting. Not too shabby. So it pu- it puts it above a, a above a lot of movies. Yeah. Like Let's see. It puts it above the 2019 Charlie's Angels. Rightfully so. <laughs> uh, both Justice Leagues, Doolittle, Capone. <laughs> Puts it above Friday the 13th. <laughs> yeah, let's don't don't tell Jason that. <laughs> and Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> Every movie should be above Fifty Shades of Grey. That is not true. We can be heroes is not above. Oh yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I would re- Okay, I'll watch Fifty Shades of Grey before I watch that movie ever again. Uh yeah. I'll watch the whole trilogy of Fifty Shades of Grey before I watch We Can Be Heroes again. Yeah. But th- I mean, this has been one of our top like our higher uh indie movies that we've done. That's awesome. Yeah. So it, yeah, it, it it is good and so congratulations uh laughing cow productions you guys did a kick ass job yeah you guys really did like like we said we have our issues but i mean who doesn't but you guys should definitely be proud of the movie that you guys made yeah it was entertaining as all hell and I can't wait to see what stuff you come up with in the future. If you don't hate us, we would love to review it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what he said. <laughs> That's always the kicker, though. Yeah. If you don't hate us. Because <laughs> we haven't been contacted by any of our previous. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. They're just like, oh, okay. Yeah, never again. Yeah. Well, I mean, in Super Astra's defense... Uh, they haven't finished their their next short film yet. Oh yeah, that's okay. So they don't have anything to show yet. I don't know about everyone else though. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sting at all. Yeah. Um. Well, I believe that does conclude this week's episode. If you like this episode. Uh, be sure to follow and subscribe to us wherever you listen to podcasts. We are damn near everywhere. Um, you can also catch all of our episodes on YouTube. Uh, be sure to follow us on social media. Hit us up if you have ep- uh, an episode idea. Want to send in your own indie film for us to tear apart. <laughs> or lift up. Or lift up. <laughs> um or if you want to answer our question of the week when we post those, or if you want to join us for an episode, we would love to have anyone on. Uh, you can follow us on social social, me- social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at the All Bros. We are also on TikTok at the All Bros. Have you posted anything new? You know, you know what? And I had a great idea for uh, uh, Halloween Kills when it came out on Tuesday, but I just never recorded it, and I'm kicking my ass for it. Bruh. I know. <laughs> You can still do it. <laughs> That's true. I can. I probably will, actually. Because, dude, it was so funny with that movie. Literally, um, the uh, people... Because uh, I went on it the day that it came out. Because um, I got the Steelbook Tuesday, right? Like, it came in the afternoon. But I pre-ordered that shit back in October when it first came up. And people were giving it one star because they're just like, Oh, um, th- uh, it wasn't available the day it came out. It sold out. And everyone else is just like, okay, that's no reason to give it a one star. There's a reason why it's up for a pre-order. It's an exclusive. It's a collectible. Of course it might sell out. It's not Best Buy's fault that you didn't pre-order it. <laughs> that's no reason to give it one star. Now, the one people that were giving it one star because it became it came dented, because it came in bubble mailers instead of boxes, which thank God mine came in a box. So it's actually in pr- pretty damn good condition. Like, there's barely anything wrong with it. Um... But yeah, people that were giving it one star just because like uh, they weren't able to get it because they didn't pre-order it. Like, come on, guys, really? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So follow us on TikTok, where I will post some some videos. You can also email us at the Albros Channel at gmail.com. 
uh, or go to our website, tinyurl.com forward slash the all bros, where you can find links to everything that we do, um, including some merch options for you if you guys so are inclined to do that. Uh, we finally sold something other than a Monster House shirt, which was great. Wasn't it Tusk? Or yeah. It? Hell yeah. So, thank you, whoever the hell bought a Tusk shirt. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, yeah. Um, also, be sure to go check out the Laughing Cow production on Twitter. They, um, you can find them at Laughing Cow Prod, uh, where you can find links to their, everything that they do. Uh, be sure to go follow the director at Doug Bremner, or Doug underscore Bremner, and go follow the Inheritance Italian Style Movie. It's at Catania the Movie. I'll post links to everything in the description. Um, but yeah, like go check out all of that or go check out their website, laughingcowproductions.com. So yeah. Um, once again, big thank you to Laughing Cow for sending us the the movie to break down. Yes, we really thank appreciate you so much. it and love how exclusive we feel. <laughs> <laughs> we feel special. We feel so special. <laughs> and I feel like in a little way, we we ruin it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we give our honest opinions, and that's all we can really do. Yes. All righty. Well, next week, uh, we will be breaking down Sing 2. We have already seen this movie, and spoiler alert, it's great. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Yeah, so you guys can look forward to that. And until then, this has been the All Bros Podcast. I'm Caleb. And I'm Jonathan. And we will catch you guys next week. Deuces. So long.